You will be this bird, bring you guys a Dark Steer replay commentary. Um, this is a hero that has not been very popular for a while, um, and I ended up playing him last night in a random draft, so I thought I'd go over him with the, uh, with you guys. Um, as I'm looking at this, 3-3 played a Dark Steer game recently, um, yesterday, and, uh, and I'm interested in watching that. I'm a very good Dark Steer player. I played it a lot in, um, in Optic. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see this yet. To the Dota Buff section, Dota Buff is a sponsor, and I am uh, slightly covered doing these things, so just that disclosure, and then we can get and jump into Darkseer. So uh, the reason Darkseer is kind of cool as a hero is because he has a skill called Iron Shell, puts on an ally or himself, which does damage to enemies near him. Uh, Darkseer, by the way, fun fact, was one of my favorite heroes when I first started playing Dota in Dota 1. Darkseer, Bristleback, Death Prophet kind of heroes. Um, but you put Iron Shell on a creep, which will damage the enemy creeps, which will kill them slowly. You don't always get the last hits, but at least it pushes. And in the past, it was good uh, as a hero because you could use Darkseer to get guaranteed last hits in the offlane, even if you're being uh, physically zoned as a melee hero. And because you can also push the wave, and then it ca uh, cascades into like levels and items and stuff like that. Um, you have a surge ability that make makes an ally or yourself max movement speed. Vacuum will group and clump up enemy heroes. And then um, your ultimate makes a wall if your enemies pass through it. It slows them for a 0.5 to 1 second uh, slow. And it also spawns a replica that um, uh, does a lot of damage. And I believe that the cast on the wall still does damage. Does it not do damage anymore? I'm not 100% it does damage anymore. I think it just spawns an illusion and slows enemies. It used to do like small amounts of damage, like 100 or something. Not sure if it still does that. Anyways, um, very unpopular hero right now. One of the lowest. Um, and I think the reason is because of the deny experience. Dual lanes are really popular right now, which means Darkseer is an offlane hero. It's just not good unless you have a melee pairing. In a lot of cases, it's kind of negative anyways, because it's melees versus range, right? So there's some matchups that work really well, but in a lot of cases, he's just not a very effective hero, essentially. Um, space uh, stat-wise, he's very strong. Um, Pretty, really good base stats, really good strength gain, really good int gain. His agility gain is terrible, so he attacks slow and doesn't get that much natural armor, but you can build into those things. Movement speed's fine, vision's good, armor's ama amazing, um, and uh, his damage is super good too. So there's a lot of really good things about the hero, um, base stat-wise, but his abilities are not very straightforward in terms of using them. It's hard to get kills with them. You kind of have to walk with your opponents is one of the negatives. Um, pretty common skill build here. Uh, max Iron Shell first, get at least two surges, and then you start getting vacuum slowly. Grab an ulti much later. You don't want to get it at six almost ever um and then later on you'll do vacuums into walls for team fights um common items soul ring so you can cast uh, iron shells constantly i'm not the biggest fan of soul ring myself i think the game that i played i got a bottle which i think might have been better because in the past soul ring was like mandatory on the hero just because you'd cast a lot of iron shells but it's not quite the same you kind of need to be active in your lane you don't just need like as much mana as possible so i think arcanes in some ways if you can afford it is better because it helps you make sure you can spam those out while still being survivable and dual lanes gives mana to your allies um blink dagger can be really good because you can do blink vacuum walls uh, pipe of insight or greaves or mech or crimson guard these are basically the four items that you're thinking about getting uh, I don't know if I'd get a blade mail in most cases, but sometimes probably. Um, Magic wand. You want to start south shield since you're a melee hero. You can get greaves if you're late game and things are going well. Heroes you're good against are heroes that have lots of little things because you can deal a lot of damage to them, and a lot of heroes that are strong with illusions usually your hero can work well against. So Phantom Lancer, Terra Blade, Brood Mother, kill the spiders, whatever, kill Naga illusions, that kind of thing. Um, and heroes that don't have the best team fight necessarily because Dark Seer's team fight is good, which makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, kind of surprised about some of these. Here's your bat against. Uh, Oracle has a dispel with his first skill, which means that he can remove the iron shell on your hero, the surge on your hero, or the iron shells on your creeps, for example. So he's very good against Darkseer and lane for that reason. Um, Lone Druid is probably just very safe because you need to stand next to Lone Druid to kill him for a long time. So if he casts in rage, you run away towards your fountain and he can usually escape here's like enigma uh, i'm not really sure probably just because the team fight is so strong from enigma that a dark seer isn't really good enough against it if i had to guess but i'm not really sure and a lot of these other heroes are just not that worried about the illusions that spawn um a little surprising you're bad against anti-mage but that's probably because anti-mage has high magic resistance so the iron shells aren't a threat and then he also if he hits you directly he's draining your mana pool which means you can't cast more iron shells and then obviously making an illusion of him later is a scary thing but he can always blink away when in danger so that's probably why am is here among other reasons so basically any of the heroes that are mobile and can escape dangerous situations a lot of them are, are good against darks here so that is the dota buff section the win rate wise he is not doing amazing um in fact, if we look at the one on Dota Buff, it shows him 
it, I think it scrolled. Uh, it's it's actually really high for uh, divines and immortals, um, but this is only for people that share their dota buff information. So if we reference that in a second, uh, we'll see the numbers a bit different. My win rate's really high, and I'm 59%, played 44 games. Um, but that's mostly long ago that I used to play those. So let's remove this and hop into the game really quick. I'm trying to pump this video out before the day nine show starts. Oh, that, ex that makes a lot of sense. My sounds are wrong. Um, I don't know why it keeps doing this. I think my headset sometimes has some trouble. It needs to be unplugged once in a while. Since it's wireless, it kind of just stays on all the time, the box does, which means that once in a while, I need to unplug it and plug it back in so that the software can work in. Oops, and now it's working, I think. Come on, baby. Okay. And resume. Okay, I can hear sounds in my ears. <laughs> okay, so the way that you have to make Darkseer work almost always is you have to pair him with a melee hero. Uh, in this case, I was playing with all of my lower skilled friends. So um, the skill level is not as high, but I paired. we paired with a melee hero. Um, this was a random draft game, so we didn't. I ended up randoming, so I got Darkseer. Um, but you kind of have to pair with a melee hero, ideally one that can chase as well. So what we want to do is I've got Iron Shell, and my melee ally has an Orb of Venom so that he can attack and chase people longer, which means we get more right clicks and more Iron Shell. And he's also got a Gap Closer that also allows him to initiate. So in this case, we're already dealing damage to the Witch Doctor here. I did run away far enough for the, the cask to get away. And then as we are killing the Witch Doctor, all is good. Now I'm an Iron Shell too. Now I don't necessarily want to attack this guy, because if I attack him, it's going to stop my hero from moving, and that means I'm going to get far farther away from him. But because uh, Chachi was able to get his dual breath off here on the uh, blade, uh, the Juggernaut, that means that his movement speed is going to be slowed for um, five seconds there. So that's why we we're able to catch up. By the way, uh, you'll have to forgive Chris. He's not a experienced uh, Urspit player. He does play him once in a while, but not super often. So he was uh, playing a little sloppy this game, as you'll notice. And I, 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 he found out for the first time when I told him this game that you can double tap your stone to drop it in front of your hero. He didn't know you could do that, so he was trying to adjust that during the game instead of doing it in a lobby because he didn't know until I noticed how he dropped stones. Um, so just a heads up about that one. So the way that we are probably going to want to play the lane is putting Iron Shell on Earth Spirit for the majority of the time. Um, Chris making a moderate mistake there. So Jug is actually pretty good against Darkseer for the fact that I, I can't believe the Wish Arc did this. If he actually just ran back to his tower, he probably would have been fine, but for some reason he kind of just committed there. The reason Jug is good against uh, Darkseer is because if things get scary, he can use his spin, which makes him magic immune for five seconds. And by doing so, um, then he doesn't have to worry about dying, pretty much. Going for some damage here. I think I knew that his spin was probably still off cooldown is why I went for that. I was kind of sad that he went for that rolling boulder because really all he needed to do was keep um, attack moving, in my opinion, to guarantee that um, he got that chase through. Um, I also spent the first bit of my gold on a boots. This is usually pretty uncommon for Darkseer because you have the ability to surge away. Um, and I actually can't let uh, Jug break that off of me because I do need the mana regen. Not sure why I was walking this way. Uh, maybe to go check the rune or something. Which is actually what I should have done here with my time, as I did get zoned. And I think now they said Storm's going. I think Chachi said Storm was going bottom to check rune in a moment. And then I was like, oh shit, I should have checked the rune while I was there. Because I was there at the two minute mark, like I easily could have made it. I've also been kind of absent from lane. I could have been putting iron shells on these creep waves to push them potentially to get a level advantage. But the downside of doing that is then what happens is that the enemy is going to be underneath their tower and then diving them becomes a lot harder. Although with iron shells, it's actually pretty useful because what you can do is you can dive, but as long as you don't right click the enemy heroes, then the tower doesn't aggro to you. So you kind of just have to like, if there's a lot of creeps under tower, you just need to stand next to the enemy heroes until they die basically, or until they're low enough to right click is an option. I also told Chris to start hiding in trees more. This is pretty important when you play Earth Spirit because you don't necessarily want them to know exactly where you're standing because you don't want them to be able to see your initiation that they're planning to go for. Like I said, you don't always get the last hits with the Iron Shell, but just standing near them um, gets you close. If you're curious about the Iron Shell, it's just a, uh, it's a immortal from, um, um, from uh, the Compendium for the Battle Pass. Put another Iron Shell on Chris so that we can initiate here. Um, ideally, the person we're going for is always going to be the Witch Doctor. 
I ran to the left here because I figured that um, Jug would expect me to go this way. So if I run left, then it's unlikely that he's going to be able to um, stick with me. So all I need to do is run outside the range of the, the Blade Fury and I'll be able to survive. I ended up buying a bottle here because my HP is so low. Um, I did have enough gold where I could have maybe just bought like a Ring of Health or something. That could have been an option. Um, and over the course of the laning stage, it would have given me a lot of impact. Maybe I should have, but I thought that the, the bottle would give pretty good value just because it would keep me in the lane um, sooner. Like instantly, I would basically be fine in the lane. Um, and as soon as we get bounty runes or other runes, then I'd be able to contest the lane as well. I actually got a couple more last hits than I expected to. I think this would be a great time again to check rune. I, I, I definitely underplayed this both times see i this was the moment i was thinking about where i should have walked to the rune instead of thinking like well time to go back to base because if i go to check the rune then i'll be there right at four minutes and then i'll know if the runes there now i could potentially go ganking with this um and i did see that storm was kind of low mid but chachi said he was doing well against him and i thought it was more important just to get back in the lane so step out of lane briefly chris still gets the experience on earth spirit while i'm gone and um and now we can go for a potential kill i have to be kind of careful about going in here because otherwise it might end up um, costing him um, uh, more, more stuns, basically. Should have put the Iron Shell on myself, I think there would have been a better idea. Chris ended up staying alive, which is really good. I was a little bit worried about him. But I got Arcanes now, so we basically are covered on mana. Now we're running over to the Bounty Runes. Since I have my bottle, I can bottle these up. I got really scared that he was going to jack that from me. And now I can use the bottle to heal him up as well. Which is kind of nice. So now he doesn't have to use the shrine either. I think he said he had a salve coming too, which I believe he's using. Although maybe I should maybe should just save the salve and I use bottle instead or something. I'm not sure. Same principles. Their ward did end up dying here. Should have he should have definitely right clicked the witch doctor there. I'm also focusing a little bit on denying just to try to limit what uh, the experience that my opponents have. But at this point, the lane is going, I would say good. I mean, I've got four kills, actually. I didn't realize it was such a huge amount. But this would have been a good time to go on the Witch Doctor, I think. Although, I guess it could have Cascade bounced between the two of them. What level are they, actually? Level four and Witch Doctor, which is pretty scary. Like, the, the toughest thing about the Witch Doctor here is just that, like, even if we go on that guy, he can still threaten us in such a big way. We have pretty big amounts of creeps here. I think I didn't notice the healing word necessarily right away. And that's why the Witch Doctor kind of just tanked damage. I wanted to go for that kill as well. Oh, he actually did die. Uh, maybe to, like, catapult damage or something. I was a little surprised about that. Um, but the Maledict is a huge threat, basically. Cast Maledict and Jug spins, and somebody's probably going to die if they don't get out of there. And a lot of times it's us initiating with Rolling Boulder, for example. So we don't really necessarily have the ability to escape uh, once we commit like that. I'm just going to put more Iron Shells on creeps. I should have probably saved that one, maybe, to give it to Chris, but... Probably worked out okay. I think uh, Chachi asked if I wanted to shrine, so I'm going to surge over here to try to get there with him. So don't waste too much of his time. And just Iron Shell myself, because I'm almost full mana and have clarity going anyway, so that will heal me back up. I maybe could have surged him back to his lane, perhaps, or surge myself. Um, and I probably should have, because I still have a clarity going. Picked up a Ring of Health now for extra regen, because again, the whole point of me being in this lane is that I'd stay here as long as possible and do pressure to the enemy heroes. Uh, of which, I don't think we've even killed Jug yet. Oh, we, I'm sorry, I'm way off. Uh, twice he died, once in laning stage, and once a second time later, I remember. And ideally, you want to get two Iron Shells on the creep wave if possible, because then the enemy creeps are dying so fast that it's actually pressurable. Like, right here, we should have been diving on this Witch Doctor for sure. Especially right now. Like, right now, he should be rolling in. Um, I think I eventually got him, too. I dropped my ulti. So the, the biggest issue, I think, was that I didn't realize that the healing ward was down quite soon enough, I think. I think Chris, yeah, also was going to get punished for that. Um, but if we dove a little bit earlier, I think it would have been better. Like, the part of the problem is that Chris isn't standing in the right position. He's always kind of standing behind the lane, where he needs to be standing where I'm standing. We need to flip our positions. I need to be in the lane constantly, and he needs to be sitting next to the trees ready to initiate. That way, as soon as there's an opportunity, he can start rolling, and they're not going to see it coming. So a slight mistake there for him. And a lot of this is kind of positioning. Cast Iron Shell before I'm TPing just so that the uh, I get free mana. I also bought a wand. That way I have a little bit of burst heal in the laning stage here. He bouldered uh, for that last hit, I suppose. I maybe could have surged him right away. Um, I think might have been alright. 
But I think I just Iron Shelled. I Iron Shelled the Creep. And then it was like he kind of went in. Um, and so it's like I didn't have an Iron Shell either. Now that I see the Venge, I need to probably run away. He does still land his stun, and now there, as long as there's no Maledict, I should be fine. I basically just need to get out of the Blade Fury range, and it's going to be okay. And the vast majority of that I, I didn't take damage from. So, a little dangerous. Lost some life. It's just a couple bottle charges, though. And I've still got Ring of Health pumping out, as with the, uh, the Mango. So, I'm just going to go check to see if the Rune's there. It's not. So he said that the, uh, the Storm may have been in the area. I'm just trying to accelerate things a little bit while um, there's downtime. That way you guys can, that way I can get done in time for the day nine show. Totally forgot about the bounty ring. I felt really bad about this. I shelled him. Unfortunately, I made a huge mistake with the cask. And because that bounced back twice, we lost our kill here. This should have been 100% a kill. Although I think Chris probably should have rolled instantly, basically. Like as soon as we saw that the witch doctor was there, he probably should have rolled for it because then he could get on him faster. Whereas instead, we kind of got there a little bit late. Um, I think that was part of the reason things went bad. I asked, I asked Chachi to rotate to my lane. Because uh, by playing mid hero, what, what you're doing basically is you're kind of a siege hero. So you kind of just want to like push creep waves and damage the tower. So now he's now that he's in the lane, basically, we have a real ability to damage buildings. Put an Iron Shell on the um, Earth Spirit. Because we do want to push this. Maybe I should have cut creeps a little bit more as well. Might have been a good idea. Surge Chachi to get him out of there. Chris goes in. He does do his ulti. Unfortunately, the Omni Slash on the um, on the Jakiro came out a little early. And here I just need to get fully healed if possible. That way I don't take as much Maledict damage. I pop Wand for that reason. Wand is really good against Maledict for that. Because it gets your HP back up to where it was about before you got initiated on. And it really saves you a lot of HP. On the bright side, despite losing two heroes, we still do take the tower. And by taking the tower, that means we kind of accomplished our mission, and that now it's going to be easier to push out that lane kind of consistently. So I'll teleport to the tier 2. You don't want to teleport to the tier 1 in a moment like this, because then the next person that comes to defend or tries to save you is going to have a lower teleport time, and I'm going to get here at the right time anyways. So it's really not that big of a deal. I probably should have Iron Shield myself instead of uh, what I went for. And Jug's still kind of sticking around here. I think Chris maybe could have pursued, because knowing that the Jug is... Uh, already used spin, that's his one defensive measure, other than his Omni Slash, and he already used Omni Slash as well in the previous fight, so he probably should have rolled to chase that. Chris's game sense isn't quite um, the highest, still pretty good mechanic player, except for when he's playing Earth Spirit. He's just a little rusty though. A lot of cases Earth Spirit just isn't worth playing, um, it's kind of similar to Darkseer in a way. He ends up finding the enemy team, I think he ended up rolling into the Jug Spin once again. Just gonna surge him to keep him a little safe here. He's actually uh, fine though. Just checking to see how the other lanes are going here. And then same thing, Iron Shell creeps. It's gonna jug spin there to offset some of this. I was pretty late on my uh, arcane boots here. I definitely want to sit here and keep pressuring the jug if possible. Easiest way is just to cast Iron Shells. I check the cooldown of Jug Spin here. Drop my Arcanes to use my Mango so I get more regen out of it. And now I'm just going to rotate lanes because I kind of realize that I'm not really accomplishing that much here in the safe lane or in the off lane because the Jug can always just spin when things get bad. I was thinking about surging myself, but I might need to use it on Chachi instead here. Surge him now. He's playing it safe. A lot of heroes collapsing. That's Nyx coming. That is the Eventful Spirit coming. Okay, it looks like the Nyx is following me invisible is what's going on. So now I'm rotating up to the top lane. I feel a little aimless right now. Um, I think we saw that the Nyx was invis, if I'm not mistaken. I should be using my Arcanes on Moonhead here. I was a little sad that Chris didn't go for a stun instead of a silence. If he stuns him there and Moonhead gets the follow-up, then we can certainly get a kill. I was, I was kind of blaming Moonhead in the time, but I think that was more Chris's fault. It would have been really hard for him to react in time. Very clearly, they have an Observer Ward on the high ground. Iron Shelling the Earth Spirit here. Gets an ulti off on the Storm. He gets stunned as well. He actually ends up dying on the high ground. I, I did wand him. Drug thinking about ulting me, but... The, with the illusion being there, he didn't want his Omni Slash to bounce a bunch. I wasted my Iron Shell on Moonhead right before he died. So that was kind of a big mistake. I shell Chachi here, told him that it was happening, that way he could stay close to the jug. Should be a kill here. 
And now we just give him the punches. We had a good laugh when Moonhead came in like that. I love when, when like, uh, a Wraith King just goes for a hit like that and he just crits the first time. It's awesome. I'm going to bottle Chachi up so he can stay on the map longer. Pretty important. And I'm going to surge over here to the other bounty rune to refill that. All about staying on the map. Uh, one of the big negatives about Soul Ring and um, Arcane Boots is you just don't get that much mana regen. Like, you have... You get mana from it, but it doesn't, like, if your mana pool is really empty, it doesn't get refilled that fast. Whereas a bottle works pretty decently at getting mana back. Maybe should have walked to the side shop and bought a TP scroll, perhaps. Don't think it would have been a terrible idea. But in the same vein, I also just want to push lanes. So that'll get a lot more, get a lot more done pressure-wise. And we also have a catapult, so that'll help a little bit. Be slightly scared about the rotating heroes. I'm just checking the scaling of my abilities right now. Um, I picked up level 10. Uh, the talent tree is between evasion and damage. Um, and most of the time, people get damage, I feel like. Evasion can sometimes be useful, but 12% is just really, really, really low. So I feel kind of weird getting it most of the time. Um, it's just it's just such a small number. But that doesn't mean it's not helpful, but it's like, it's like such a low number that nobody's ever going to buy a Monkey King bar to deal with you. But in the same vein, you can't really rely on it. It's like if somebody attacks you like eight times, you're going to dodge one of them. So it just doesn't feel great to me, I guess. So I generally prefer to avoid it. Um, so instead, I'm just maxing out vacuum pretty early, just because it scales really a lot better. Um, the It's it's a pretty good ability by itself. Wow, it does 200 damage at level 4 now, I didn't realize. It's a lot more than it used to do back then. In fact, the, wow, I didn't realize the fourth point, it doubles in damage. In fact, it doubles in damage every level. Every additional point that you get from Vacuum doubles the damage, which is kind of cool. I used my Crimson here because it was obviously he was going to go on me. Um, I didn't anticipate the Storm being there. So I, this has probably been a, a pretty slow five minutes or so. feels like it's kind of hard for me to pressure lanes because Doug just spins on the creep waves. Other people are, are going to do things at lanes. I think... Chachi actually, yeah, he lived there. I told him to get phase boots, and it works, works really well when you're playing like a core. And uh, Moonhead is uh, working on Radiance. Um, he's struggling a little bit too much, but in some veins as well, it's it's okay. I'm just going to give Chachi some mana. Kind of the same thing as before. just want to keep him on the map as long as possible. Moonhead jacks the haste rune right out from under me, unfortunately. Walked him in a Nyx Assassin here. Don't really care too much, though. Moonhead just killed Avenge. I didn't know about that. I'm just kind of following this guy and wanting to do some damage to him. Just kind of want to see what happens. And now when I see heroes rotating over, I just want to play a little carefuler. A little bit more careful. Oh, I remember this. I, try I kept trying to vacuum. I did Crimson eventually. I realized late, like right at this point, I was like, oh, there's a healing ward. And had does still have his ultimate here. They also have a, a Radiance, by the way, which is now dealing damage because he spawned another illusion. That stun was actually really good. Surge Moonhead in. Let me see the Storm Spirit. I was very surprised he was able to land that stun. This is probably a good example of when to leave. I was trying to block him. I had an Iron Shell on that Nyx Illusion, so I was trying to make sure that I could deal um, continuous Iron Shell damage, but at, at some point it's fine to just leave the laning stage. Their iron shell on him. Good stun from Chris follow up, and that's an easy kill. Killing spree for Chris. 5, 5, and 7. So, same kind of thing. Push lanes, iron shell your melees, use your skills correctly, pressure towers a little bit. I told my team to hit this building with me because they had a dead hero for a moment, so I thought this was a good time. Pop my arcanes, and then I think they glyphed it. They did, and I was like, hmm. It's fine, is what I thought. Did have a vacuum. I also forgot to use Crimson. And finally I went for the tower. Took three whole hits. I got a vacuum off at the end at least. And now I Crimson. I was like, Crimson! <laughs> um, I, I killed a Witch Doctor. I got the tower. Probably not worth it. I'm sure we lost. Yeah, that was actually a huge loss gold-wise. They got so much out of that. Tons of levels. Tons of gold. Just a bad call by me. That the f Moonhead didn't have his ulti. Um, we got initiated on We actually didn't have 
of aggressive vision. We didn't have like a ward in the lane here to see them coming. So we didn't really get to react very properly. I didn't use Crimson correctly. It's just a lot of mistakes made in that. And I think, I don't remember if they get the tower out of it. It looks like they don't. But it was certainly a scary moment. So rather than teleport, what I decided to do, I, did I teleport this time? I did eventually. I think I was kind of waiting to see where I needed to go. I just waited a moment here. Just a little vacuum here, trying to slow things down a bit. Iron Shell, Moonhead, remember to use Crimson this time. Which is working really well against him, actually. Kind of makes him invulnerable from a lot. Of, in fact, um, Crimson against Avenge is super useful, if you think about it. Just made an illusion here on him just to help deal some damage a little bit faster. Um, but Crimson against minus armor that Venge puts out is really useful because it's guaranteed uh, 60 damage block and it gives allies two armor. But 60 damage block, so even if your armor, uh, basically the damage block is applied before armor is calculated. So before they figure out how, how exactly how much damage they're doing to you, um, the damage is taken off. So against minus armor, Crimson is effective uh, on a hero like Wraith King to make his lives go longer. Crimson is really, really effective, especially when all he has for damage block is a stout shield. He's instantly getting a massive amount of HP, especially when all he has is like Tread's Radiance. He's 100% at a vulnerable point in his game right now. I actually couldn't believe. I, let's look at this again. I, I could not believe that Moonhead did not stun this guy. I was like, how, how is this guy alive? Look at this. Walks up. No stun. That's my illusion right there. That's, it's just bugged because of the replay going back. Uh, because Chachi caught him with the Ice Path, we did, did end up killing him. But that was like way too close to him getting away for, for that kind of... Like if we killed that guy, we, we still killed him or whatever. But like if, if we hadn't gotten that kill, it would have been a much worse situation. Oh, Vacuum with Chain Frost. That's why we won this fight. Okay. Got the healing ward eventually. I think I called for us to back at this point. We lost Wraith King again. Uh, probably not worth it, yeah. Uh, we actually got a lot of experience out of it. Now we're just trying to defend against the, the Storm Spirit here. Best way to defend is to basically just punch the Storm Spirit until he dies. I wanted to surge Chris over there because he has better disables than me. That was actually worth it. Just vacuum to secure the kill, and uh, we ended up getting him. I did not remember. I had to probably surge faster. Something like that. I didn't expect for us to both die as a result, but I guess we didn't kill that many heroes in the end, in the in the first fight anyway. So that was actually a good catch up for them. The part of the problem is that it's hard for us to kill buildings right now. Um, we've got liquid fire, but that's about it pretty much. So there's only so much we can do about killing towers, and Darkseer's just not very great at that right now. Although you could argue if I buy something like a Meteor Hammer, I could push creeps with Iron Shell, then I could push towers with Meteor Hammer, for example. That would be an option. Um, but against the Jug, it just doesn't work super great, I don't think. Uh, I want 90 damage, I want 75 Vacuum AoE, the AoE. Basically, if you increase the AoE of... I think I remember this kill. I searched myself. Went for a punch into a silence. Got the slow. We vacuumed him back in, and then he was so low. I was really happy how that, that kill went. That was really well done. Um, the punch first is a little dangerous. Like, against a good player, they would probably dodge that or spin or something. But um, against a better player. But um, it worked out. It worked out pretty nice. So we ended up killing the Jug for free. I'm sure that was a stupid amount of gold. All right, not stupid amount. A lot of experience, though. 915 each. Uh, but if you increase the AoE of something, the area that it covers is huge because uh, it's, it's pi r squared for uh, radius to calculate it. So if you increase the radius by 75, that number gets squared. So increasing the AoE is a, is a really big benefit. So 12, 12 health regen, super good also. And maybe if I had 12 health regen, I would have lived here. Most likely, you could argue, especially because my strength is high, getting bonus from HP regen. That's a really good uh, talent on the right side. But because of... Um, how good a lot of these guys va are vacuum targets for Wall of Replica. If I make a Venge Illusion, I get her Damage Aura. If I make a Jug Illusion, I get Radiance. A lot of good uh, replicas. And ha that has that's more stuff that Cast can bounce to, for example. That, that Omni Slash can bounce to. So making more Illusions, I think, is a really good idea. So just more Vacuum AoE, I think, was applicable this game, especially because I already had so much regen in defensive items. Um, finishing up Pipe, I think it's on the Courier. I'm just waiting for somebody else to finish an item, if I'm not mistaken. We had this DD here. We're thinking about Roshin, and so we started it. This is kind of dangerous. I think I had a gem coming 
Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. Maybe sentries, I don't remember exactly. But usually when you want to do Roche, it's very important that you check these spots for Ob's Wards first. I think I'm thinking of the other time that we Roached um, in one of the games last night. But there was one time that we Roached where there was actually a ward on the cliff here, and we didn't end up keeping track of it. We also wanted the Aegis on Chachi, I think, but Chachi had to TP bottom to push that lane out. So instead, uh, Moonhead grabbed the Aegis, and I was kind of irritated with that, because I was like... I mean, he's already got Wraith King ulti, right? You don't really need it. Um, it'd, it'd be better if he had... If, if I took it over him, probably. Not that I'm very killable, but I, I thought it'd be better if I had it over him. Um, so maybe a, maybe a mistake from him. Forgot there was also the Helm of the Dominator build is really common on Darkseer 2. Totally forgot about that one. Uh, but that one's pretty solid because you can Iron Shell your neutrals. But I think it's better to go mass defensive here by picking up a, a Crimson Guard, as much damage as they have. Because uh, Helm of the Dominator just doesn't do that much to give you much more survivability, but it does make it better for you taking towers. It's another way to take buildings. That rather than getting Meteor Hammer, you get Helm, and then with Helm, you have a Catapult that can attack towers. Do see that my team's in a fight. I, I think I probably... I'm a little bit too willing to ditch my team, I think, sometimes. Like, for example, I, I prioritize pushing this tower instead of coming to my allies, but most of them were dead already. This, that was his first ulti. That was his ulti going off. He hasn't used Aegis yet. I uh, went for the vacuum wall. I'm waiting to use my defensive items until after he respawns if possible. And now I'm surging out. And I put an iron shell on him. It's actually pretty funny. The next assassin has Echo Saber. Which I thought was very weird. Which is very weird. This is uh, where next assassin learns that I'm really damage resistant. And then we basically laughed for a while because Moon had basically used three lives. But we won the team fight. That's just all it took. It just took three. Why is there so much gold? There's a little gold change. I feel like there was a fight recap that I missed or something. I feel like the gold change should have been more. Maybe not. Um, maybe because we're winning that there wasn't that much. And then Moonhead is like down here pushing buildings because he's like, hey, they're all dead. And Storm bought back and he got maledicted. So that's why he died. He got maledicted basically. He also didn't buy a plate mail. He went, he went a hyperstone instead. I was pretty upset that he died. I wasn't like super upset, but I was upset that he died here. I was like, why are you pushing the tower by yourself? He wanted to do some damage, and maybe he did, but yeah, with the storm buyback, how much gold did he gain? So storm still lost a little gold, but probably worth the buyback. Storm went uh, Yule's this game, by the way, probably because of silence reasons. Strolling over here. Save the uh, save my lich. Um, Could have bought ultimate orb. I also I bought the void stone already just to give me some better mana regen. Um, maybe I, I was a little unsure if I should go ultimate orb or mystic staff, but I, I just thought I'll just get more mana because I'm already I misclicked on the catapult there unfortunately. But I thought it would be better to just get more mana pool from the um, the mystic staff. More mana regen, more mana pool, that kind of a thing. And the reason I'm buying Hex is because we're a little bit Disable Light. Like, it's almost always a great item for uh, Darkseer to purchase, just because it's going to help you get Disables on uh, important heroes that are hard to kill, like Storm Spirit, for example. I started TPing here, but I saw the fight was, like, super over, so I ended up canceling. And instead, I just said, continue pushing. Um, I also grabbed the cooldown talent. I think this one's actually not picked as much by pro players. I generally see them go Surge more, AoE Surge. But my thought was that because most of our heroes are ranged, one, two, I guess it's three, three out of five melee, but I just kind of felt like if I have cooldown reduction, it's lower cooldowns on pipe active, it's lower cooldowns on crimson, which I think looks like crimson can't be used that often. But lower cooldown means um, more benefits, especially once I get hex. And I felt like, it, in, in my regular skills too, and I just felt like that was going to be more beneficial than an AoE Surge. AoE Surge is really good, by all means. It's super, super good, especially against slows. Against slows, it's really good. And you could maybe, you could probably argue for sure that's really good against Cask as well. Because against Cask, people, even if they're still chain stunned, they have a moment of time where they can move really fast. So maybe, maybe I should have gone AoE Surge for those reasons. Um, but almost always I go cooldown reduction. But I can definitely see why it's beneficial. Uh, this is a really nice thing you can do with Iron Shells on a Darkseer. You can just Iron Shell one of them and surge it away, very similar to having a Helm of the Dominator. And now I can basically guarantee that this lane down here pushes as well. 
Jugs ending up uh, ended up dealing with that one with a spin, but I'm also pushing the other lane, so I do not care very much. We caught both heroes. Looks like it did vacuum. I don't know if it did anything though. I think they were already in place or something. Still got a healing ward down. Still got a healing ward down that I, I could have punched that. I just didn't. I guess I didn't see it or something. And now I'm going to heal everybody up a little bit with my bottle charges as we go push. I shield the melee creep. I probably should have vacuumed that guy a little earlier. Luckily the creep wave stays alive. There's really not that much Jug can do to slow us down. Like he can radiance and spin or whatever, but I've got... Uh, I don't know why Crimson hit literally only Moonhead. That was a little weird. I mean, I, I don't even know why. Storm's trying to slow this stuff down, but he's not really doing anything. I guess I have to be pretty worried, though. I mean, we do have a lot of disable and stuff, but... Use pipe this time, because now we're actually a little bit vulnerable. Trying to stand with everybody so that we tank him a little bit here. Uh, I should have iron shelled Chris a little bit faster there. That was a bit of a mistake. Oh, maybe it didn't work because I used Crimson too early is what happened. That Because the cooldown is lower than the, the timer. So the timer basically wasn't up yet to apply on everybody. It's probably what happened. I think that's why the Crimson didn't hit them. One of the negatives of the, cool, of the cooldown reduction. So the only person did hit was Moonhead, who probably didn't get caught by the previous one. Did it even hit me? I'm not sure. I was very blown away that Moonhead tanked all those tower shots. I thought he was going to walk around walk around them very slightly. But they have dead heroes, so we just keep pushing. So I, I've actually, in all the games I played last night, I like really noticed how beneficial it is when playing with my these, this group of friends that I just play like a tanky sort of hero. I just told everybody to punch this guy. Almost got him, very close. Um, but I really noticed how useful it is to just buy, play like a sort of defensive hero that can buy defensive items, and to just buy like Pipes, Crimson, Mech, the lads kind of stuff. That way when we do team fight, it just gives us a much better chance of winning those, no matter what our picks are. It's just because in, in, in this example, we basically just kind of like death pushed. You know, like once we get an opportunity, we go high ground. Then they make a mistake and we push again. Then we, then they make another mistake and we take the next racks. And it just kind of keeps going on, you know. Um, I, I don't know how much regen necessarily we had. I mean, he's got a little bit of regen from Pipe, for example, 2 HP here. It's things like that that are helping a little. Trying to keep Chachi alive here. Oh, got him with the mana burn. Never used the smokes. Did I even use Hex? I think I did. I remember Hexing somebody up here, but maybe that was a different game. There's my Hex. Drop my Arcanes, use my wand to give me a little bit more mana since I was drained. It's really nice to have a Hex against a Nyx Assassin as well. This is where I realized the fight was actually over. Actually, I, so I used Crimson there, same thing. Used Crimson, but it was didn't get activated. Because it was too early. Very much dead. That may have saved me. Alright, and I believe this is the part where we lost in the base. And we were all dead. And I'm sure they got a lot of gold from this. And a ton of experience. But... They got mega creeped, so I think we just super accelerate from here on out. I think this is why I remembered hexing people, but don't actually hadn't actually hexed anybody prior to this moment. I also realized that nobody on our team had to bring a Basilius because we have no agility heroes, so we also didn't have very much um, just raw armor. That's why I was queuing up a Vlad's possibly because I was like, eh, maybe we should get a Vlad's, you know. Uh, but I thought instead Greaves is probably going to be better, as would Mech, because. Um, we don't really have that much HP regen. Like, if I had a Helm of the Dominator, hypothetically, in some of these fights, it, especially in the Death Push, it probably would have been better than Crimson in some ways, just because it's going to get everybody that wants their low back to full HP faster. And I think we did have an Urn. I think Chris had a... Yeah, he had a Crimson, or a Spirit Vessel, so... Taking Roche to be safe here. I think Moonhead was even thinking about getting a, uh, a Rapier, so... Um... I grabbed the cheese. I ended up giving it to the Lich because that was probably the person that was most likely to be ganked by a strong hero. So giving giving uh, giving her the cheese is going to allow her to stay alive. Now we're just going to kill shrines to be really safe. 
I think we were trying to finish our items. We were like messing around a little bit, obviously. Having a gem would be a good way to deal with this too. Like as you can see, they have an observer ward that's out of base. Making sure that they don't have that would help. I was making fun of Moonhead because he didn't get the reincarnate with no mana talent against a Nyx Assassin and a Jug that could buy a Diffusal Blade, you know. Oh wow, this guy bought some really weird items. Going to Radiance Octarine. Is where I uh I used text on him. Chris made a mistake though. It's okay. Got the pipe. We just got freaking one shot here. Chachi started crying out in panic on voice chat. Once again, I want to hex this guy. I was stunned, unfortunately. Now I'm going to turn and hex him as soon as I can. Hex definitely makes a really big difference against Storm Spirit. I told Moonhead to dive, and he's like, I want to dive, but I'm... <laughs> he just didn't go in. I was sad. It's okay, though. Alright, um, so that's Darkseer. Get farm in your lane. Buy defensive items. Um, facilitate your melee carries um, and melee heroes. Almost all the time what I was doing in team fights was I was looking about... I was aiming for a good wall, rep wall of replica vacuum, if possible. I was aiming to put iron shells on Wraith King and Earth Spirit because they're going to be up in melee range against enemies. And I was making sure that I pressed Pipe of Insight, Crimson Guard, or Mech at the right time. Meaning that I don't want to press it just because there's a little engagement or something. I want to press it when my enemies are fully committed so that I block and block a lot of damage and save my allies a lot of survivability. I think that's important. And in fact, something in Earth Spirit maybe could have bought instead of Eggs. Because I don't think Eggs really gets bought on Earth Not that Earth Spirit's played a lot, but I don't think Eggs ever really gets bought. I think what I would have liked to see him get, maybe... Um, oh, I don't know. There's a GPM talent over here. Um, maybe like a Vlad's would have been kind of nice, or a, F a Yule Scepter maybe, or a Four Staff, something like that maybe would have been kind of nice, just to help our our, our push a little better. Because we've got a, a an Assault Curse over here on Moonhead. This increases our our push and survivability. If we could have Vlad's on top of that, this gives you two armor. This gives you two armor. This gives you five armor. A Vlad's would give you four armor. Pipe gives you magic resistance, and then Greaves I can heal with. So it's like all of these things together just make our death push a lot better, which we basically got to abuse. They never really had the ability to like win team fights. That's kind of what happened. Um, I don't know, they just didn't have that much going for them team fights. They built a lot of really weird items though. Echo Saber Nyx is really bizarre. Battle Fury, Radiance Jug, it's been done, but it's it's not good really, especially against a Dark Seer, because I kept making, like, look at my, um, oh, you can't see it. Can't see the damage tab? What if I go this way? Because that was like the end game screen. Okay. Can you not look at damage tab after? I guess they don't save that data. But I did a lot of damage with Radiance Illusion from uh, Jug, for example. So um, that's Darks here. Combo with your melee heroes, buy your tanky items, help them win team fights, show up to team fights. And um, yeah, that's about it. Farm tons of items. I got pretty good GPM. Bought a side of the vice. Buy Shivas sometimes. Shivas or Hex, basically one of those items. This game Hex was definitely better. Because they didn't have that much physical damage. And lowering their attack speed is good, but not as important as hard lockdown. On a lower cooldown with um, cooldown reduction. So, Okay, uh, thanks for watching. That was Darkseer. Have a good day.